Good evening and welcome to Holden Evening Prayer here at Zion Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Sonia Pankos and it's a joy to have you here with us in worship this evening. We will continue to have Holden Evening Prayer each Wednesday at 6.30 until we are able to rejoin together again in worship in person here in our sanctuary. And so we are glad that you can join us for this time to come together to worship the Lord. Also during this time, if you would like to uh, mail in any offerings, or you can also give your offerings online as we cannot gather in person, but we still continue the work of the church as we care for others and worship the Lord. Also, if you have any needs that you are aware of, we invite you to call the church office um, and let us know what those may be so we can help care for each other as well. And now we take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine. Light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. You who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you, God of day. Nothing on here. There's no mute here. May God be with you all. And also with you. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Can we just watch it on the computer? Well, honey, that wouldn't matter. Watch, I'll unplug it. You, you don't believe me on that. See, you still don't get any sound. speaker on the phone to hear other participants you see they got that block and i think they block our sound when they do that Let my prayer rise up like incense. 
presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives amen, amen. our scripture reading for this evening comes from the 27th psalm the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall I be afraid when evildoers assail me to devour my flesh my adversaries and foes they shall stumble and fall though an army encamp against me my heart shall not fear Though war rise up against me yet I will be confident one thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for he will for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble he will conceal me under the cover of his tent he will set me high on a rock now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. Who have who have been my help do not cast me off do not forsake me O God of my salvation if my father and mother forsake me the Lord will take me up teach me your ways O Lord and lead me on a level path because of my enemies do not give me up to the will of my adversaries for false witnesses have risen against me and they are breathing out violence I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. When I was growing up, I did not appreciate the book of Psalms very much. It seemed like it was just a really kind of wordy book with things I didn't understand in it. 
a lot of poetry. I didn't really like poetry. I liked stories. They had action in them. But I found later, as an adult, I have truly come to appreciate the beauty of the book of Psalms. And one of the reasons that I'm so drawn to this book as an adult is that many times I find that the Psalms give words to feelings and emotions and thoughts that I didn't even know I had. And then as I read them, I think that is exactly what I'm feeling right now or thinking right now. And so they give voice in a different kind of way. A couple weeks ago, I shared with you Psalm 13, which um, speaks about how long, O Lord, and that longing for when this will end. This week, the Psalm 27 has been the one that has been speaking to, to me and in a different way. It's a very different kind of psalm because it begins in a very positive manner. It begins as we're talking about, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And I've been drawn to these first few verses in this Psalm because it feels to me like there's a lot of fear lately. Fear of the unknown, fear of what the future's gonna bring, worry, concern, anxiety. And so there's kind of this undercurrent all the time of, of fear. And yet we hear in the words of this psalm, this powerful affirmation of trust in God, that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? These images are beautiful images that we see here, that the Lord is my light that light that comes to us that shines in the darkness, that shines in those dark times, that image of God bringing light in the midst of all of our struggles. And then that image of God, my salvation, that sense of our trust, our ultimate salvation, our ultimate hope is in God. God has come for us and God is for us now. That this salvation will be when we um, die and when we're with Christ. But this salvation is also a salvation of the moment. That God has come to save us in the midst of whatever we are facing. That God is the stronghold, it says, of my life. And so these are powerful words of affirmation. But what I really love about Psalm 27 is Psalm 27 actually has sort of two parts to it. We have this first part of Psalm 27 that really speaks of these words of absolute confidence and trust in God. But then we see at verse 7, there's a shift in the words and the cry of the psalmist. Verse 7 says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. And the whole second half of the psalm is really petitioning for God, for God to be there with a person in the midst of their struggles, in the midst of their enemies, that God would be there with them. And asking God to not abandon them in the midst of that, but to lead them through that difficult time. And what I love here is this combination of these two together this trust, and this calling upon God. And a lot of times I really find that those two really are connected in our lives. And many times it is when we're really struggling the most that we really find what is our stronghold that we can rely on in those struggles. And we find that our stronghold is in the Lord, that the Lord is my light and my salvation. And so we see here that this deep affirmation of trust truly comes because of the struggle that the psalmist is experiencing in the second part of the psalm. And so they're deeply interwoven and intertwined together in this Psalm 27. It's very beautiful in verse four it speaks about, and this is a powerful verse for me. It says, one thing I ask of the Lord that will I seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. 
And we see here that this, um, we can't all actually gather in the temple, in the worship space, but gathering in the Lord's temple, the Lord's presence, really, that our practice of religion, of spiritual disciplines, of gathering together to worship each week, whether virtually or in person, of reading the scriptures and prayer, and these spiritual practices here, this coming together really helps us to grow in that faith and in that trust in the midst of these times of trouble. And then we see here that it ends again with an affirmation of trust. Verse 13 says, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I, this land of the living is powerful because that means I believe that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in this life. I don't have to wait until I die to see the goodness of the Lord, but that the goodness of the Lord will be here and now in this life. And that this is truly at the end of this psalm an affirmation that I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord and that the Lord will prevail. And then it ends, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. These are beautiful and powerful words. And words that frequently come to me, one of the songs from the Taize community is, um, comes directly from the final verses of this psalm and connects so beautifully here to what um, we have even earlier in the psalm. In verse 6, it says, I will sing and make melody to the Lord. And so as we um, reflect on this psalm in Psalm 27, what I really would like to leave you with this evening are the words of this beautiful Taizé song. Taizé um, songs, we kind of just, it's a simple scripture, usually one verse that is kind of repeated a few times to really stay with you. And I pray that these words will stay with you in this week, that you will wait for the Lord to be strong and let your heart be of good courage. I invite you to join us in this song. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness, and the darkness has, has not, not overcome it. it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name chosen one of God most high. Then Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people that peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love 
and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Let us go forth with Christ's peace. We invite you to, at this time, if you would like to, we will be turning on the chat feature. So if you would like to chat with others who have joined us in worship as we come together to worship the Lord and come together in this virtual place, we invite you to go with the peace and to share peace with each other. 